ओम शांति एंड गुड मॉर्निंग सो आई एम टोल्ड टू डिस्कस विथ यू अबाउट सम एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ लास्ट मुरली एंड पर्टिकुलरली अबाउट गॉडली सर्विसेस आई नो इट There are eight varieties, or eight, I mean four couples, so to say, of varieties of services. The first one is that is what in '63 Baba said in his Murli, Sakar Murli. Once one fine morning, Baba said in his Murli that godly service is going on at a bullock cart speed. he wants godly service to be or to have jet speed so that is the first variety bullock cart speed and jet speed second variety is labor intensive godly service and capital intensive godly service third variety or third bunch is message oriented godly service and <coughs> experience oriented godly service the fourth one which is not yet taken up the fourth one is peace time godly services and peaceless time that means godly service through the troubled times godly services so these are these four varieties so to say the first one was as i said you see discussed by baba in 63 he wrote he said in his murli that i don't have any child who is my right hand and who can speed up this godly service from bullock cart speed to <coughs> jet speed and i was at bombay in, at that time and i wrote to baba that baba this is not fair you are criticizing us you see we are not we, this is not fair because in our institution we all have to obey divine instructions we have to fulfill divine directions and and all those things and everything we do is based on your directions whatever ways and means of godly services that you have told us that you have taught to us we are implementing so up till now if godly service is going on at a bullock cart speed and not at jet speed it is not our fault it is on account of directions so far received or instructions so far received or methods so far taught to us by you so if you give us ways and means of or if you teach us ways and means of speeding up godly service ah uh, with such jet speed then you have to give us such instruction such ways and means of godly service and we are sure we will increase the speed of godly service then baba replied to me that you are a good lawyer and you argued your case soundly but i know children i know children and you have got you children have got six to vice you all know five vices you know what is that six to vice laziness you all children have laziness and he said baba said that i am not giving you ways and means of jet speed uh, godly service because you you children are very lazy and a time may come when you see all those jet speed godly service instruments will be there but you won't do it won't use them and what will happen that there will be spiders web on all those instruments for jet speed godly service so i wrote back to baba then i said baba what you wrote to me is it a blessing or a curse i don't know and i gave an example from ramayana those of you who have 
studied Indian philosophy and Indian scriptures, they might be knowing one incidence. <coughs> I don't know, I think most of you may not be knowing Ramayana. In Ramayana, what has happened that King Dasrath, uh, Lokic father of Ram, King Dasrath had no children. And he had gone out, he had gone out uh, for hunting. And then when he was on the top of a tree, near a river, he heard some noise. Somebody drinking water or somebody collecting water. So he was an expert. And so he threw his arrow in that direction. And unfortunately it was not one animal who was drinking water, but one young boy had come there to collect water for his parents. He was taking his parents on a pilgrimage and his parents wanted to drink water and therefore he came to this river to collect water. And this arrow struck him and he shouted, Oh God, Oh God! And then Dasrath realized that he has made some mistake. Instead of killing an animal through his arrow, he has killed uh, one human being. So he quickly, <coughs> he quickly ran towards that river and found that young boy about to die. And he said, sorry, I killed you, unfortunately, without knowing. So what do you expect from me? He said that, please take this pot of water, take it to my parents, they are there, and offer them water, and tell them that, tell them that I have left this body, and see that my parents go on for pilgrimage, make some arrangements for their pilgrimage and for their safe return to their own homes. So King Dasarath, the father of Rama, took that pot. He went towards that place where those old parents of that boy, his name is Shramana, and he offers water. And then those blind parents say that, you are not my child, who you are. And then Dasrath reveals his identity. <clears throat> and he says that, unfortunately, I have killed your son. And your son has asked me to bring this pot of water. Please drink it. The moment they heard these things, those two parents, that means parents said, we don't want to live in this world, we want to die. But before our death, we want to curse <clears throat> we want to curse you that just as we are leaving this body on account of separation of our child through you, we give you, we give you curse that you will also die because of separation of your child from you. So, Dasrath replies to those parents, says that I don't know whether this is a curse or a boon, whether it is a curse or a blessing. So the old parents ask him, how do you say that it is going to be a blessing? He said that I don't have any child at the moment. At the moment, I don't have any child. If I die today, I will die without any child. But on account of your curse or on account of your blessing, I will have children. And when I die, I will have that consolation that I have my children, but they are not in front of me. They are away on some duty. They must have visited, they have gone, must have gone somewhere. And so I will have that consolation that I have children. And they will come back and they will perform my after these ceremonies, they will take care of my kingdom. So I will have that consolation. 
So it is much better to die with uh, children away from you rather than to die without children. So like that I told, I wrote to Baba that I am like King Dasarath. Because you say that if you give us ways and means of doing godly service with jet speed and you say that we children are lazy, we have that sixth vice, then what will happen? That those instruments for jet speed godly service will remain on, in one a corner and there will be spider's web on account because we will not be using. So I told Baba, wrote to Baba that I think this is not a curse but a blessing that at least now you have agreed. Now you have agreed to give us ways and means of doing godly service with a jet speed. And that was the turning point in the history of godly service. That was the blessing that we received that we wanted to accelerate the speed of godly service. When because I was instrument, I wrote to Baba like this and Baba gave indirectly or directly by whatever means you call it to spe increase the speed. Then we, what happened that we started, we had our own songs, then our exhibition, what not, you see. This soul was instrument in introducing at least more new 30 varieties of godly services. And the speed of godly service really did increase. So that is the first phase of jet speed godly service and bullock cart speed godly service. The second one is capital intensive godly service and labor intensive godly service. Capital, this is just like factory. In case of a factory, the employer, the boss, invests money, buys machinery, Establishes factory, starts manufacturing process, goods are manufactured and sold and there are laborers employed. Laborers come and work. They, at the end of the year or at the end of the month or at the end of week, some week also, because in some cases at the end of the week salary is paid. So the laborer gets salary or wages for his work done, but the employer gets the profit. Employer may not be there on this spot, but even then he reaps, he earns profit because he has made capital investment. In case of labor intensive, a laborer, a worker has to go there, work it. If he works, then he gets salary. If he does not, if he remains absent, he will not get any salary. You will not get any wages. Same thing is here also in this godly service. There are a few labor intensive godly services. Where for example there is an exhibition. If you go there and explain exhibition to those visitors, if you explain them, then there is some godly service done by you. You get some benefit, some profit, uh, some positive result out of it and your, you get some extra mark or, uh, for your godly service on account of explaining exhibition to those visitors. But if you are not there, if you are busy, if you don't go there and somebody else is explaining that exhibition, what will happen? Nothing accrues to you. You don't get any benefit, although the exhibition service may be there. So, in case of labor intensive godly service, your uh, labor, your efforts, they are directly linked with the result. If you don't work, you don't get any result. If you work, if you explain, like that, you see, there are all varieties of, hundreds of varieties of labor intensive godly services. But there are a few capital intensive godly services also. That once you do it, for example, once if you establish one center and then 
some, uh, some, some sisters or brothers go and maintain their center. You will get the benefit of continuous accruing godly service or continuing accruing benefits of godly service because you were instrument in establishing that particular center. And that center runs and then you, what happens that in the beginning there will be five students in the, at the end of the month or at the end of the year 50 students and then like that you see godly service may expand. But you were instrument of, you will be the instrument of putting in that seed, what we call a seed money, or instrument for getting things done. I give one example of a capital intensive godly service. You know our brother Bridge Mohan. I think you know brother Bridge Mohan. His father, brother Anand, His father wrote one book, Peace of Mind, in Hindi. Man ki Shanti in Hindi, Peace of Mind in English, in 1958. That was the first book printed of this divine knowledge. He was the first author of a book of this divine knowledge. And that book became very popular, very useful, compact 132 pages. It was translated in many languages, including English also, in Gujarati, Marathi, and so many Indian languages. That brother Anand, that was Lokik father of brother Bridge Mohan, died sometime in 1963. But his work of writing the book remained. The result, what happened, that still that book, as on today also, it is being printed, it is being sold. And there are a few very exam good examples of a result of that book. In 1992, for example, I went to one center in India. There was that foundation stone uh, laying ceremony of one building in Maharashtra. I went there. One of our divine brother, who was who's an architect also, and is also a builder. He was in charge of construction. After the foundation stone ceremony, he came to me and said, Ramesh, why I want to speak with you. I want to tell you something confidentially. I said, yes, brother, what do you want? So he took me to a corner and said that, I feel that this building will cost about 600,000 rupees. And I will contribute iron and cement. I will contribute iron and cement which will roughly cost about 300,000 rupees. So I want, this will be my contribution. 50% cost of this building will be my contribution. So I asked that brother, I don't know you, who you are, and how you came into godly service, or how you became a member of this godly family. And then he said that, you know, in India we have Rakhi. I think now in the West also, Dadi Janki has popularized Rakhi. You see, you all know it. So, he said that he, he, he was a very busy businessman, busy contractor or architect also of that town. <laughs> On a Rakhi day, sisters came and tied Rakhi on his forearm, and then gave him that book, Peace of Mind, written, and that happened in 92. And book was written in 1958. The author died in 1963. And in 1992, that book is given by one teacher to a guest, to a uh, VIP. 
that VIP refuses to accept that book. Say, sorry, sister, I am very busy. I don't have time to read your books. It will be just a waste. Please give this book to somebody else who might read it and get some benefit out of this book. Sister said, okay, okay, so many visitors come to you. Keep it here. Keep it in your, on your desk so that if somebody, somebody comes, he may read this book because there may be queue. There may be queue of visitors to meet you. So sisters insisted and their brother said, okay, if you want to waste your book, keep it here. I don't mind. He was in, staying in the same building. On the first floor, it was his residence. And on the ground floor was his office. Then what happened after a couple of days? He had some problem. He was busy in this office and he was not getting sleep. So what to do? How to spend time or how to kill time? So while he was just walking in his office chamber. He just saw that book, Peace of Mind. And he actually at that particular moment wanted peace of mind because he had some big problems because of which he had those sleepless nights, so to say. So he took that book and went to his bedroom and started reading the book. He started reading the book. And while reading the book, he got sleep. Because of peace of mind book, he got peace of mind. And he got sleep. So next day morning he was fresh. And then he realized that, he realized that by reading that book, he got peace of mind. So he thought that, let me take this knowledge. So this reading of the book, Peace of Mind, was the starting point of his reading or get, getting this knowledge. He telephoned sisters that you told us that there is seven days course. How can I undertake this seven days course? Sisters said, told him that you have to come to the center for one hour a, week, one hour a day for seven days and we will teach you seven days course. He had his own ego. He said, sisters, what do you think? I am not such a useless person that I can spend one hour a day for seven days. I am very busy. But I can do one thing. I have my assistant, PA, personal assistant, who is a stenographer. He will come to you. He will come to you, you take, give, uh, give him knowledge. He will take your dictation of your knowledge. He will write it in his shorthand. He will type that thing, your knowledge, and give it to me, and I will read that knowledge. His, uh, cyclo his typed notes. The sister said that something is always better than nothing. Sister said, okay, send, send your PA from tomorrow. So next day, his PA went there with his, uh, you know, stenographer's book. So he started taking notes. Sisters, I mean, this is, you might not have got that experience of uh, giving knowledge to a stenographer and a stenographer taking notes of the knowledge. Have you got that experience? Is there anyone who has given seven days course like this to a VIP through his PA, through his notes, type notes. So daily for seven days, you see, the stenographer used to be there. He used to take down notes. He used to type them and give it to his boss, and his boss could find time to read those notes. This is how he completed his seven days course. On the eighth day, the boss, that engineer, and the stenographer both came to the class and they became Baba's children. And so he told me that 
because of that since rakhi day or since after a week of rakhi or so to say after a fortnight of a rakhi i have become baba's child and i now appreciate this knowledge and i want to make my own fortune and therefore i want to donate or spend 3 and 1/2 thousand rupees that is 50% of the cost of this building and i will see that the building is constructed i will act also as a contractor so my question to you is that brother anand wrote his book in 1958 he died in 1963 but book written by him influenced that person to become baba's child he became baba's child by taking seven days course and at the end of the talk i would say that he agreed to spend 300 300000 rupees for godly service don't you think that the author of that book will get some share some share of the fortune created by that expenditure of 300000 rupees what do you think book written in 1958 person dying in 63 and person reading that book in 1992 and agreeing to spend 3 300000 rupees in 92 don't you think that the author of that book will get some share whatever percentage i don't know that baba knows but i at least know one thing that the author of that book will get some share am i right you all agree that the author of the book will get some share of course teachers sisters also will get some share and all those things are there i don't have any doubt about it but some share will accrue to that brother anand who died in 63 and godly service taking place on account of his book in 1992 am i right so this is what i call as capital intensive godly service that you do something with the result what happens that that becomes an instrument of godly service for years together for and you may be there you may not be there you may be alive you may not be alive but even then godly service takes place through you because of you because of you being instrument for that particular work or that particular center or that particular instrument we don't know there are so many varieties so this is the second variety of godly service capital intensive godly service and labor intensive godly service everything is essential i don't want to say that this is required and this is not required it's not like that everything is essential we want capital intensive godly services we want labor intensive godly services we want also bullock cart type of godly services we want jet speed godly services also so these are the four varieties other four varieties as baba said on that day don't do and now you see you have through your experience through your tapasya finance and all those things you must see that you give some experience to somebody and for the first time so to say in this season baba drew that distinction between message oriented godly service and experience oriented godly service and baba very clearly said that when you do godly service through your words effect of words may be for some time but afterwards in due course of time the spoken words the spoken words may not have its own effect but baba says that baba in his murti says that if you have given experience to somebody then that experience will be a long lasting experience you can't forget that particular experience it's very clear it's very simple for example i give you a cup a, a spoon of sugar i give you all the in, in detail all the plus and minus points of sugar what is sugar how is it the sugar cane and through sugar cane we get sugar and all those things but 
I don't give you taste. So what will happen? When you look at the sugar, you know this is sugar, but you can forget. Afterwards, I give you one spoon of salt. You may be confused that this is sugar or salt. Because sugar is white, salt is white. Both of them are crispy. So there will be confusion. And you have to just remember in theory what are the benefits, how it tastes and all those things in theory. But if I give you taste of sugar, then you know that sugar is sweet and all those things. Then you remember that sugar is sweet, that is your experience. With, before, when you are not tasted, you have only theoretical knowledge, knowledge through words only, that sugar is sweet. You, may can, you can forget that thing. But if you have tasted sugar, you know it is sweet, then what happens? If I offer you a cup of tea, if I offer you a cup of tea without a spoon of sugar, what will happen? Hamlet Ivan will immediately say, Ramesh, why, what is this nonsense? Huh? You have not given me huh, this a cup with sugar. Give me one spoon of sugar. You can't see in a cup of tea whether the sugar is there or not, in theory. But if you know the taste of sugar, if you just sip one, uh, sip, uh, sip a little bit of uh, coffee, what will immediately say, Hamlet Ivan will say, yes, there is no sugar. So without, uh, you can't see physically also, the sugar is there or not. But because you know the taste, although the sugar is invisible, you can immediate, immediately diagnose and recognize and say that, yes, there is no sugar in this one. Am I right? You can easily say, because you have got that experience, that this experience is like this. But if you just have theoretical knowledge, Words, only worldly knowledge or words, that means knowledge through the words, then what will happen? That such experience, such things may be forgotten. But if you give experience of something to somebody, then what will happen? That that particular person will remember that experience. Give them experience of peace, give them experience of love, give them experience of happiness and all those things. In one of early Murlis of Baba, Baba said that in the world people do not have that authority. In the world people do not have that authority to give experience. You children only have that authority to give experience. Because you have experienced Baba, you have experienced God, you have experienced this godly knowledge, you have experienced Raj Yoga. And therefore you know it, that in this particular manner you can give experience to others and other souls can experience also. In Bhakti, for example, what happens that people go, there are so many in India, you see, there are so many, at so many places, the scholars come and give, or give talk on Ramayana or on Mahabharata or other scriptures also, even on Gita and all other things, scriptures also, for days together. But they merely talk. They do not give experience. With the result, what happens? That those who listen to their talks, to their um, discourses, people forget. But if they get experience, then what will happen? That they will remember these experiences forever. And this is how Baba wants us to now change it over. In the beginning, you see, when we were in that infant stage of doing godly service, in that infant stage of doing godly service, it was essential to give message to all that Baba is now, see Baba is giving this knowledge and all those things. Message of Baba incarnating on this earth. All those things, you see, 
in the beginning it was essential. And in the beginning, Baba wanted us to give or to do message-oriented God the service. In fact, in one of his Murlis, Baba says that the, one of the aim, one of the aim of doing Godly services, Baba says that you have to inform everybody. You have to inform or give message to everybody that Sri Baba has come. You have to give message to everybody that Sri Baba has come and come, come and take this benefit of this knowledge. Experience this knowledge, obtain his blessings and obtain divine benefits or divine births in the golden age. And there Baba clearly told that I don't want anybody. I don't want to listen from anybody at the time of destruction. At the time of destruction. That they should tell that, oh God, now there is destruction. You must have been he here on this earth. We did not receive your message. If we had received your message, we would have acted upon your message. We would have obtained fruits of your message. We would have obtained better result in the new world. We would have obtained our place in the golden age. I remember in 74, I and B.K. Usha, we were in Tanzania, Dar es Salaam. And um, we gave message for about one and a half hours of Baba, Baba's incarnation and Godly service and what not. But <clears throat> in that function, there was Deputy Mayor of also Dar es Salaam. Deputy Mayor of Dar es Salaam, and at the end, there was that question-answer session. And that Deputy Mayor got up from his seat and said, Ramesh Bhai, I don't want to ask any question to you, but I want to ask question to Sri Baba through you. I said, what question you want me to, or what question you want me to inform or tell to Baba, Sri Baba? This happened in 74. So he said that, oh, tell Sri Baba that you came on this earth in 1937. You came down on this earth in 1937 and from 1937 you are continuously giving your knowledge to all. And we, give you, we get your message in 74. Why? Why this discrimination? Why the discrimination that children in India got message right from 37? And why your children in Tanzania, in Dar es Salaam, they get message in 74? Why this discrimination? This is my question to Sri Baba. You followed this question. That means we gave message to these people, you see, of Tanzania late in 37. And therefore, I, say, I said, you see, Baba, in Sakar Murlis and others, otherwise also I said that at the end of the day, at the end of that, means by the time of destruction, I don't want uh, anybody to say that, oh, we did not, oh God, we did not receive your message. If you had given us your message, we would have accepted your message and we would have transformed ourselves and we would have obtained one seat in that golden age. When we started first exhibition in India, in Bombay, we had two models. On one side, one picture of destruction and this Kali Yuga and destruction. On the other side, golden age and picture of golden age, deities and all those things. And you know that how Brahma Baba also had first divine vision of this message of destruction and establishment of the new world. That happened in 35, 36 or so, when Baba was in Bombay and he was staying near the seashore and in the evening he used to go for a walk while he was sitting on the beach. He had that divine experience, the whole sky in front of him. 
became big television screen and he had that message, he, had, he saw that thing, destruction taking place, bloodshed and what not, people killing each other and all those things. And Baba got afraid. Baba said, oh, what is this going on? I don't want to see these things. And then he closed his eyes also. And then after a couple of min seconds, you see, that scene of destruction vanished from his eye, in front of his eyes. And then he saw establishment of the new world. Angels coming down from the sky. And then angels playing the role of deities and happy world. He liked it very much. And then Baba heard that voice, that message, that you will be responsible for this transformation. I have actually heard this story from Baba. And then Baba, I said, Baba, then what did you do when you heard this voice, that you will be responsible for this world transformation? Baba said, he raised his hand like this, and said, oh, I don't think I am capable enough to do this work. He raised his hands like this and he refused to accept that responsibility. So this is the message which was the starting point of godly service, bringing, which brought about a change in Brahma Baba. He went to Calcutta. From Calcutta he went to Banaras. He, had, he stayed there for two months. He went on churning this knowledge and all those things. He was in the transitory stage. He came to Hyderabad and then he was participating in the birthday celebration of his grandchild. And then from that, from that celebration, he got up and went to his room. Dadi Vrijendra followed him. Because Dadi Vrijendra was the mother of the child, Baba's daughter-in-law. And there she saw for the first time Sri Baba incarnating in the body of Brahma Baba. And Baba uttering the, that Sanskrit verse, that famous Sanskrit verse. I don't want to repeat that in because most of you do not know Sanskrit. And so the first incarnation of God, first time incarnation, I always call Dadi, Brijendra as that lucky person that she was the first to see the incarnation of God on this corporeal world. We all saw incarnation of God the other day on 25th. But now, in 2005, that Brijendra was lucky to see that incarnation of God of Sri Baba in 36, 36 or 37. So this is in the beginning, Baba wanted us to give message to as many souls as possible. And therefore we had exhibitions and what not. So many exhibitions. I think exhibitions were the best means of doing message-oriented godly service. We used to give messages. And as I was telling that when we had our first exhibition in Bombay, we had taught our, our guides that when you take the party in front of that destruction portion, Kalyuga or Iron Age portion, when at the back there is a nicely painted picture of destruction taking place, floods, atom bombs, people killing, all those things and all. That means all those three ingredients for destruction, natural calamities, civil wars and international atomic war, all those things depicted nicely. And we used to tell people, our guides used to, used to tell those visitors that, look, now you are seeing this destruction. Now you are seeing this destruction in the form of a picture. For you, at the moment, this is not a reality. For you, it is not a reality at the moment. But a day will come when this will become a reality. A day will come when this will become a reality and at that time you will remember us because we are now giving you this message that this world transformation is going to take place because God is now on this earth. And if you neglect this message, then at the time, at the time of the doomsday, you will remember God and you will tell God that, Oh God, we received your message. We received your message, but because of our laziness, 
because of our other shortcomings. We did not accept your message. We did not mold our life. And therefore, as on today, at the time of the destruction, we are going to leave this body without any good work done which can give us place in the golden age. So please remember, remember this message and please remember my name. All guides used to tell them their name. For example, if I am explaining that party, I will tell my name that you will remember, remember Mr. Ramesh, that you visited this World Renewal Spiritual Exhibition and you got message of Sri Baba. And at that time you will remember, remember your mistake. You will repent for that. You will repent for that. Because next door, here is the golden aged world. And you will not be there in this golden aged world. This golden aged world will be in reality in near future. But you will not be there. Because of your negligence. Because of your non-acceptance. <coughs> So in the beginning it was essential to have <coughs> godly service through messages. <coughs> so Baba wanted us to give message to as many as possible. You, may not, you have not seen Dadi Janki. In Bombay I have seen Dadi Janki speaking before a big audience of three people. Big audience of three people. And out of them I was one of them. And there were two others only. A day was there like that, you see. A time was there like that, you see, when there were hardly a couple of people. I remember when I became Baba's child, in the beginning I was a cooperative soul. I became Baba's child in 61. And then we had our first function, Rakhi Day. And so, Dadi Nirma Shanta was our teacher. So we had our service planning meeting. And Dadi said, what do you want to do? I said, Dadi, we want to give message to as many as possible. <clears throat> Let us have a big function. Let us have a big function. So Dadi asked me, for how many people? I said, Dadi, 4,000, 5,000 people will be sufficient. He said, what do you want? What do you talk? Hardly anybody comes to our function. I told Dadi, that is your old traditional method. I know how to give message to everybody. Because I have got that experience. Baba has taught me. Because between, and during that period when I was a cooperative soul, <clears throat> I was a general secretary of an institution where we used to do big functions, inviting 10,000, 15,000 people. They used to pay uh, for their entrance. 10 rupees, 15 rupees, 100 rupees like that. We used to charge money. They used to come and they used to get reward for what they have spent money, for what they have come there. So I told Dadi that I have got experience that I can easily tackle audience of 5,000, 10,000 people. Dadi said, nothing doing. We will have a small function. We will take a small hall. Christian. And Dadi said that nobody comes to our function. So I said, Dadi, I know how to give message and attract people. So Dadi said, okay. Dadi Nimbarsanta said, okay. And then we printed our invitation. We said, dramas, dialogues, songs and all those things. And at the end, we wrote discourse. And a hall for 350 was booked. We opened the gates at 3 o'clock. Function was from 3.30. And within five minutes, 350 people came and occupied the hall. So this is how you see message-oriented godly services started. In the beginning, we were not knowing how to give a message also. We used to just print messages, invite, give flyers and all those things, but there was no regular method. In that first function, we, I wrote drama in search of God. Usha was our principal actress. It was really very nice drama. The audience enjoyed that thing. And so many times I say that I am the first Shakespeare of this knowledge. Because to present this knowledge in the form of a drama and attract people, give message to the people in the form of drama. This is how we see message-oriented God service started in a big manner 
in 61 Rakhi time. So in the, in the so exhibitions and what not, so many things started. Conferences also and all those things you see, I mean. But now Baba wants to give us, and Baba wants us to have that emphasis on experience. That experience we can give experience of peace. Baba says also, in one of his Murli, Baba said that if a person has desire to have experience of peace, and if you try to give experience of love, that will not be accepted by that person. You will have to diagnose the need, the desire of that person. You will have to meet his challenge. You will have to meet his desire. You will have to fulfill his desire. Then what will happen? Then, then there will be that real experience. Otherwise, when he wants peace, and if you want to give experience of love, he will not be, it will, it will be just as uh, electricity, 110 volts and 220 volts, 20 volts. This will be misconnection, wrong connection. So in case of experience-oriented God research, you will have to find out, you will have to find out what he wants and give him what he wants. In case of message-oriented service, we give what we want to give him. In case of experience-oriented godly service, we will have to give him what he wants. For that, in another Avyakta Murti Baba has said that you children should have an intellect of a scorpion. Intellect of a scorpion. You know scorpion. The Baba says that scorpion also knows that when and where he should bite, so that his bite, his biting is most effective. Where to bite, how to bite, and all those things. The scorpion knows it. He will not bite on a hard surface. He will bite on a soft surface. Because he knows that the poison will go into the depth in a soft surface, not in a hard surface. So you experience oriented God, so you have to find out the soft corner in that particular person and touch his soft corner. Everybody, we all have some hard corners and we all have some soft corners. Am I right? You just examine your own life and find out whether you have some preferences some likes and some dislikes. Dislikes are your hard corners. Likes are your soft corners. So find out those soft corners, what he wants, what, has, what he wants, and then give him. So what, and therefore what has happened that, in this case now we have to act as doctors. Find out from what he is suffering. and give them, give them that particular experience. And this experience can be, Baba has said in his, one of his murli, that there can be four varieties of experience. Experience of, for example, somebody wants experience of peace, love. That means experience of connections with Baba also. Second thing, experience of Baba's knowledge of all virtues. First is connections with Baba, or relations with Baba. The second is experience of virtues. The third is experience of powers. We can give experience of powers. And the fourth one is experience of what actual deeds committed or performed by Baba. We can narrate those experiences and those People will be absorbed in, in those realization of those experiences which Baba has given us, to, given us so far. Narrate them and then what will happen? Those, ex, uh, those incidences will create a lot of impact on the minds and hearts of the people. For example, virtues. Each virtue, how you will have to find out how Experience of each virtue can be given. Up till now we were knowing that how 
नॉलेज ऑफ ईच एक्सपी वर्च्यू कैन बी गिवन और ईच पावर कैन बी गिवन बट यू विल हैव टू गिव देम नाउ एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ ईच पर्टिकुलर पावर when for example we had invited high court judges of bombay 10 high court judges came here and i was giving them class on this powers through yoga powers through yoga and you know those eight powers that we get in yoga you all know those things so one of them is power of judgment so i told them about this power of judgment i gave them class on these powers and then at the end there was question answer and one judge said i don't want to experience other powers if if i get it it's all right but i want experience of power of judgment because i am a judge as a judge i have to give judgments so if i experience this power of judgment if i get benefit if i get this blessing of power of judgment then what will happen my judgments will be perfect and most effective because as a judge i know that i should not punish an innocent person or i should not allow and you know i mean a, a, a culprit to be free i should not give us i should not make wrong judgments so i want power of judgment give me knowledge of how to get power of judgment through yoga up till now you gave me experience i mean the details of all this knowledge knowledge of power all the powers now teach me how to get this power of your judgment and then we gave him power of the experience of uh, method also was taught <coughs> they all went back to bombay and then they continued some, uh, out of 10 four continued to do yoga morning 4 o'clock yoga <coughs> and after a year we had a get together of all those judges they came <coughs> they came to our center and then i asked them about their experience of experimenting with power of judgment and that judge who asked me this question he said yes ramesh bhai <coughs> i have experienced this power of judgment then i asked him this question that how could you difference differentiate between your original power of judgment before you experimented with yoga and afterwards he said this uh, this experience is a very subtle experience but i know in the beginning otherwise you see before this knowledge i was having a dilemma whether this is right or wrong because sometimes the line of distinction between right and wrong is so thin so thin it's impossible to <coughs> arrive at a right decision we were having that lack of confidence that whether this is right or wrong i don't know you know that president john kennedy he had that dilemma <coughs> whether to attack cuba or not to attack cuba or not he said oh god please give me help guide me whether should i attack cuba or not because what i will do will be written down on the pages of history anthony eden england english prime minister made mistake of attacking suez canal he lost it and as a result what happened that he had to resign as prime minister madam thatcher he attacked she attacked some of those some of those islands near south of america and she knew that if i fail i will have to resign but she made the right judgment and she succeeded <clears throat> anthony eden failed and made a wrong judgment in the suez canal attack and he had to resign president bush attacked iraq he succeeded in that thing so he survived but if he had failed like that john kennedy also thought if i fail i will have to resign and people will say that here is a failure president of america so like that you see he said that judge said we always have to think whether i am giving a right judgment or wrong judgment if i give a wrong judgment people will criticize me that here is a judge who does not he did not know law 
But he said that now I know that quality of my judgment, I know it. And I know that less number of people go in appeal against my judgment because they know that there are no chances of gaining positive result from this judgment. Whatever these judges said, it will be reconfirmed re in appeal. Therefore, don't waste money. So he said, formerly many used to go in appeal against my judgment. Now hardly a few, they go in appeal against my judgment. And the lawyers know that this judgment is a very sound judgment. So he said that my sound judgment is on account of my power of judgment. I daily in the morning try to catch that power of judgment from Bab Shri Baba. And I utilize that power. So this is known as experience-oriented godly service, where you see all these virtues, all these powers, all these connections with Sri Baba, all those, for example, relations also. Each experience of relationship with Sri Baba is different. If you remember Sri Baba as father, and if you try to gain benefit of, uh, from Sri Baba as father, let me tell you very honestly, experience and the result of remembering Sri Baba as father is entirely different from remembering Sri Baba as mother. You experience these things and you will realize. And then, based on that thing, you can teach people that if you remember Sri Baba as father in this particular manner, you will get this particular benefit, this particular experience. In a family also, a child knows the basis of different relationships in the family. If he wants food, he will not go to this father, but he will go to mother. The mother, I am hungry, I want food. He knows it, that food can be given by mother. So he approaches mother for food, but if he wants money to pay his school fees, he will go to his father. Oh, father, give me money. Am I right? You must have all done these things. But if you wanted to play, you will not go to your father. Come on, father, let us play. You will have gone to your brother and sister or friends. Let us go and let us play. So if you want to experience play, you want to enjoy entertainment, all those things, you go to your friends or your brothers and sisters, not to your father or mother. And if you want to get something done, you order your servant, that, oh, servant, come on, polish my shoes. You know what the servant has to do, what your brothers and sisters have to do, what your mother and father have to do. So each experience of each relationship is entirely different. And find out what that particular person wants it. And give them, teach them, that this is how you can remember Sri Baba as father, Sri Baba as mother, Sri Baba as ocean of knowledge. I always write one article in each, magazine, in each issue of Gyanamrut magazine. So the day on which I want to write article, on that day I remember Sri Baba as ocean of knowledge. I remember Sri Baba as ocean of knowledge and try to imbibe power of knowledge from that ocean of knowledge, experience of knowledge. And then when I, what happens when I start writing my article, Baba's knowledge flows through my pen, through my words. And then what happens? I can write. People ask me, how do you write such beautiful articles? I said, it is because of power of ocean of knowledge. I try to catch that power of ocean of knowledge. If you want money, remember him as ocean of wealth. And I'm 100% sure you will get wealth, you will get money. If you want to experience experience of a brother, experience of a combined personality and all those things, each one of all those different relationships with God, first you will have to master all these relationships. You will have to master the method of experiencing those relationships. And then teach people. and people will benefit from your, these experiences. They will experiment in their lives, and then the, what will be, that will be that experience-oriented godly service. The fourth one, because now I'm, it is 12, uh, 20, the fourth one, which is not discussed so far, 
is peace time godly services and disaster time godly services it's entirely new subject not much has been discussed on this subject all over godly services at present they are peace time godly services exhibition conferences get togethers what not all uh, retreats all those things call of time everything is peace time godly services but what will happen how best we can do godly service at the time of destruction you can't conduct a conference you cannot organize a conference at the time of destruction it is just like this vehicles vehicles for journey on the road on the earth they are entirely different from vehicles in an ocean or in a river you can't drive your motor car in a ocean can you drive it you require a different variety of vehicle you require a boat same sets of vehicles are not useful like they are entirely different peace time godly services and destruction time of godly services what happened i give you why i experienced these things and why i could tell you because in bombay <coughs> long back before about 15 years we had riots riots on account of some religious differences between two communities and curfew was imposed and uh, imposed curfew for five days totally we were confined to our homes for one hour only they were used to give break so that during that one hour people you can go out buy milk and all those essential commodities and survive but for five days we were totally confined to our homes and when then at that time i was doing yoga and then i realized that how to do godly service during riots and when there are curfews you can't go up to people and come, invite people come on come to us he gets only break of one hour in that he has to buy vegetables and all those things he can't come to you for a retreat can he come he can't come you can't organize exhibition you cannot do anything else even normal classes are not possible so then i realize what should be the methodology for doing godly service during such peacelessness time during such disturbed times baba said that at the end all those who have received messages and all those things they will realize that yes they had received baba's message they will come to you and at that time they will have soft corner to receive baba's message and highest service highest godly service will take place during those disaster times highest godly services will take place during those disaster times and at that time for example baba has said you are service through the power of mind service through our subtle body through our subtle body we can go to any place at the time of curfew and all those things your you through your physical body you can't go anywhere else but through your subtle body you can go to any place and go to any place and give them message of god we all have experience of doing godly service through our physical body you ask dadi janki when she comes ask dadi that please teach us this method of doing godly service through our subtle body our subtle body i mean physical body requires rest subtle body brahma baba is doing godly service through his subtle body we all have our subtle body dadi guldar when she goes into trance but she says she says many of us we are here but she says us there 
in that subtle world. How? Because of our subtle body, Baba bringing up there into reality our subtle worlds, subtle bodies. And then Gulrada, Baba, Baba gives us questions also. Baba gives us, come on, do this particular exercise, do this work. And then what happens? Through our subtle bodies, we do our work there. Mind, experience, got the service through the power of mind. Experience through our subtle bodies. These are the experiences, these are the methods that will only be useful at the time of such disasters. And one who has mastered this art of doing godly service at the time of disasters, I tell you very honestly, will have the best fortune in the golden age. Because he will be doing God, maximum godly service. People who are dying at that time, but they receive message. They receive divine glimpses. They will receive blessings. Through your subtle body, you can give them experience, what we call a sakshatkar, divine glimpses. That is possible through your subtle body, through your power of mind, through your uh, this disaster time godly services. And this art, now only you can learn, because now there is time to learn this disaster time godly services. At the time of disasters, you can't learn anything. Right now, you will have to master this art of going, doing godly service through your subtle body, through your mind. Through words, you have got all the limitations. Brahma Baba had all the limitations because he could not go out anywhere else. Now he can go out anywhere else. When in 71 we left India, Baba said that he has made arrangements for everything. He has made arrangements for everything. What we have to do is that everything is ready. Just go on and switch on and light will be there like that. Switch on and everything will be ready for you. He made through his subtle efforts everything ready for us. It was, I tell you very honestly, it was one of the most comfortable journey. First journey around the world. First delegation going out of India. But Baba made everything ready through his subtle powers. Everything ready. I don't have time to give you in detail all the details of our first, um, first visit outside India. But I tell you very honestly that these subtle experiences, subtle services, which Brahma Baba is now doing, most of you get, got this knowledge because of these subtle experiences and subtle powers and subtle methods of Brahma Baba. Most of you are the creation of the mental services offered by Brahma Baba. Because in subtle services, there is no limitation, there is no bondage of body, there is no bondage of time. There is, you can do unlimited godly services. You can, through your subtle body, go to a particular person and give him knowledge, give him message. I give you one example of my experiment. One of our divine brother in India had problems with his wife. His wife was a big obstacle for him to become Baba's child. So I told him that you give subtle vibrations daily in the morning after Amrut Vela. You do for 45 minutes Amrut Vela for yourself. But give afterwards 15 minutes of subtle experiences, subtle vibrations, donation of vibrations to your wife. And I told him that I will also help you. I will also help you. I will also send subtle vibrations to you to strengthen your vibrations for your wife. And I also used to give him this type of subtle vibrations, subtle powers. On three occasions I found that powers which I was donating to him, they were coming back. He was not uh, receiving them. So I asked Baba, what is this? Why this donation of powers to him are coming back? 
Then Baba in my yoga told me that because on that on those three days he was not awake and he was not doing morning yoga. If he had been doing morning yoga, he would have been in a position to receive my subtle vibrations and he would have been in a position to send those subtle vibrations to his wife. So I wrote to him that on these, 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 these th three days, you were not receiving my vibrations to you, were returning back as uh, when you write, uh, send letters to somebody. What happens? If the person is not there, what happens? The letter comes back to you as undelivered. Am I right? When you send letters to somebody and they say that person is not there, the house is locked or he might have changed his residence, the, address, the letter comes back to his undelivered. Like that, these vibrations come back to you as undelivered.